want to touch stuff. What's your favorite synthesizer? Uh, the synth. <laughs> the synth synthesizer? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I like the synth. All right, we're going to give a listen to this thing first. Composing gloves here. Uh, today I'll just be Eric. Eric here with my brother Joe. He is trained in the dark arts of programming and has made a synthesizer. Uh, Joe, however, does not know. How much do you know about this? <laughs> about what? Math or music or? Like yeah. <laughs> Uh, I didn't really know anything about filters or what an oscillator really was. Um, didn't know much about music, so pretty much nothing about the synthesizer world. Yeah, so this is this was made by someone who just had every topic was brand new, every exploration. It was made from the ground up. Uh, you used the Juice framework. Yeah. Uh, what were some of the, what was like something that really stuck out to you about the framework that you're like, oh, wow, this is dang convenient. It, it just has everything. Everything's like available to you. Um, if you want it to make a oscillator, they have a library for that. If you want to make filters, they have libraries for that. So it made everything very modular. So kind of cool. Very cool. Um, okay. So let's go through the synth first. Let's just go through some of the features and then we'll talk about uh, some of the experiences you had while doing this. All right, let's go for it. So we've got three oscillators and they each have a sine SAR square wave. So if you do this, you got a sine wave. We have a saw wave. And there's some first try it filters. So we've got some weird filter stuff going on, but if you bring the high pass down a bit, it restores the waveform. So at the very high uh, end of this value, you get like really crazy effects, which can actually be pretty nifty for some sound design. And then we also have a square wave. We've got a high pass filter. It's It's got a really, really gentle slope. So you can see that it looks more like a volume knob in this case. This is something that in the future will probably update to a, a different algorithm. Yeah. A frequency shift. That's fun. Noise. Uh, envelope, which envelopes were a fun exploration because at first we thought it was going to be easy and then it was not easy. And then we found some papers that made it easier. We can have a plex down if we bring the attack down, the sustain down to bring the decay up. We can make it even shorter. And that's how a lot of these sounds are made, uh, just using the envelopes. And then we have a resonance filter, which is like a filter, but only for the resonance. So if we dial up some resonance, let's bring the sustain back up. You can see it coming around if we really boost it. You can hear the resonance uh, being filtered and moving around with the cutoff. We base this off of a, where, where'd you find this? You found this from some paper, right? You're like, oh, and they showed an algorithm on how to do this. Uh, yes, I, I forget exactly uh, what website, um, but it, it showed basic things on how to make a filter and how to make the um, the envelope and things like that. Yeah, so this is like, he he came to me and was like, hey, what's a resonance filter? And I'm I was like, uh, I don't know. I've never heard of a resonant a resonance filter before. So now you have your first ever resonance filter. 
yeah. which <laughs> when, when i made it i thought i was making just a regular filter and and when when i was testing it out it didn't sound like a filter or the filter i wanted you know and uh it, after careful reading of the paper I was following, it said resonance filter, and that's when I realized <laughs> <laughs> it's like some weird filter type. So uh, yeah, very. This is really cool. This is something that's just fun to mess with. And there's uh, different types. You got high pass, low pass, and uh, band pass. And you can hear them all working. So this is a really cool thing. And then um, I came in and said, "Hey, you should do a FFT display because." It's it's pretty easy because it's just an equation. You basically pump things through, it's just a matrix, and you had that working within like the like the next day. You were like, bam, I got the FFT, and uh, how'd you get that one done so fast? Um, I wasn't really planning on uh, putting that into my project, and um, I just had some extra time, and so I looked around on the web um, and and found some uh good displays and whatnot and uh learned about um how to use the fft um transformation yeah and after that it didn't take too much time to integrate it into my code you got rid of the ball where's the ball <laughs> <laughs> there used to be a, a bouncing ball around the edges of this um you actually got really into the scope you want to explain a little bit about like the processes you went through to like go from Cause you started with the ball just to get graphics down. Like how do graphics work? Yeah. So I don't do um, much of graphics. Uh, I'm more of a, a backend programmer. And so uh, the graphics side was kind of new to me. And so I began with uh, just a simple ball bouncing around. Um, I manipulated the colors. And um, shortly after that, I um, learned how to get the uh, information from the processor over to the graphics side. And the Juice framework follows a, um, a model view control, um, which has three uh, different parts. You have the view, which is the GUI model, which is the the actual data, and then you have the control, which is the processor. And um, I got the data from the processor, moved over to the GUI, and from there it was just manipulating the data. Um, and it didn't take too, I mean, once once I got the data over, you know, I made the shape of an oscillator um, and I just had to uh, manipulate the colors based off of uh, the pitch and, and um, the amplitude of the wave. They're, they're basic uh, programming um, ter terminology. Uh, you have different design patterns and model view control is one of the basic ones. The, the control uh, takes uh, care of all the back end programming. Yeah. And then the view takes care of all the front end programming. And then the um, the model is what the data that's passing between the two. And so Juice is, is made in that way where you have your components, your, your GUI, and you have your processor and they're separated. And it makes it really nice, um, makes your data really organized. I think that's one of the biggest struggles with programming projects is uh, keeping everything organized. And so it made it really simple once I understood it. Oh, you know, with that, off that note too, when you built the scope, you built this in a separate project first because you were afraid it was going to screw up your main project. Yeah. And then you integrated it. Yeah. So that was really, really uh, cool. There were a couple of things that suddenly you saw why I was saying them over and over and over. Um, and all of his um, testing, he always had the, all three oscillators on. And I was constantly going, you should have the other two off by default. And the first thing I did when I opened every one of these was turn two of them off because I only needed one. I um, mean, you also saw me using the uh, ADSR a ton. And you were originally using um, another, like a library provided ADSR, but you, after troubleshooting it and having me mess with it a bit, we both concluded this definitely is not working correctly. Yeah. And so uh, how, and then you had like a breakthrough and you realized how to fix it. But this was like a course of like what, like two weeks you were trying to figure this out? Yeah, yeah. And and part of it is um uh we talked about it was about convulsion and whatnot. Um, yeah. and and I didn't really understand those concepts. And so I went and um started learning how to make the envelope myself. And and once I was able to, to make my my own envelope, um it was kind of crazy. I, I understood how you know, the, the library I was using, how their envelope to work, I was able to make their, theirs in my envelope work. So, you know, 
It's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we went on, we went on all sorts of, we went on different discords trying to like ask people, and, mm-hmm. and no one, no one knew, it, and everyone said it was super hard. And um, I had like the math down, but I had no idea how to program it, and I don't think you understood what I was saying because you had the gap of like convolution. What the heck is that? Why would we need that? Uh, so that was really, really cool. And then um, you also, you adjusted the default values of the envelope so that now that it, when you open up a new one, it opens up with values that like um, make sense. Because <laughs> before you had it uh, down, down, and down. So we got lots of clicks at the beginnings and endings of notes. And I, as soon as I started working with it, you said, I saw like <laughs> the light go on. You're like, oh, this is why envelopes are, this is how you use them. This is why they're there. You like understood the behavior, but you didn't, you like, I saw like you realize how you use it when you're making a sound. Well, when I was using the other, uh, the the library and and I was implementing the, the, the code, you know, yeah. I, I had my, I don't know if you remember, but I had my um, knobs in different positions. So like my decay was after the sustain. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and to be honest, I I wasn't really sure what an envelope was supposed to do in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> and um, you know, I, I think that was the first part of like programming it was understanding what it's supposed to do. <laughs> what the heck is it? <laughs> it is a really abstract idea. Like it's not. I, I I've done it for so long that I think oh it's just an envelope. You just you use it to control things. Yeah, it, it made sense. Well, when I heard the terms, I, I thought, you know, it's supposed to attack and then sustain and then it would decay and, yeah. and then it would release, you know? It, it made sense in my head to go that way. And, uh, you know, once I figured out, oh, the attacks, decay, sustain, release, you know, everything started clicking together. Uh, the, the you know, uh, library and the coding that I was learning started piecing mm-hmm. together. And from there, it was, you know, relatively straightforward. It's definitely a subject that once you have a certain level of, like, uh, vocabulary suddenly you can just start moving but getting that first route is just like really tough mm-hmm. um and then at the end so i was making the song and we saved it and closed fl and we opened it back up this was literally today he fixed it in like 10 minutes flat amazing and it tied in a lot of with what you're doing earlier but when we opened the project back up everything was back to the default values it didn't save any of the values all the automation was still connected but the default values weren't. Um, and then you said this connected up to uh, what you called listening functions in this new like tree structure that uh, that you had learned about and were using. You wanna talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah, so um, to start off, uh, I, I didn't really really realize how important it was for data to be, to, to be saved for a synthesizer, because I was uh, working, um, Juice has their own like um, uh, host, so you can test your, your plugins on their host, and for that, I, I I was just testing values, and I, I didn't need anything to save. And it wasn't until you you wanted Made to make a track song, and then I opened it up. Like, hey, where'd all my sound go? <laughs> and then I realized, oh man, it's important to save this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and um um so the the nifty thing though, like I said, Juice um makes everything really modular, and they have a lot of like useful classes. And uh, one of that is the audio processor state value tree, and uh, this tree keeps um the the values of your parameters and it uh um makes um it takes care of the listening um so in programming when you mess with the the gui um the the gui's got to tell other components that it's being messed with and that's what we call listener classes and they they listen to each other and the the state value tree takes care of that for you so that was really nice and that's originally why i started using this this class um but um, once I once we realized that it had to s- save state and value, um, it, it was pretty nifty because I looked into the class and and they already had functions to do it for me and you know everything was pretty straightforward and Juice already has a, a couple functions to to load and and to open the the state and so it, honestly Juice really does a lot and and once you understand the framework it it makes coding for sound way you know straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really, really cool. So, uh, yeah, that is the, well, well, you called it the synth synth plugin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right now it's only a VST three, uh, but we are, we're going to put it up for download. Uh, so you can download it. If you, I encourage you make something with this thing and send it to us. We would love to see what you've made. 
I, I really, I know I have to say some things that I think are really unique and some ideas that you have that are actually different than other synthesizers. Because processing wise, you're still at like the front stages of what you're doing. So that stuff's gonna grow and develop. But I really like the look you have. Like it's like minimalistic. Things are not in the way. As you add more controls, it'll be interesting to see what you do to try and keep that. Um, and I really like the visual displays like integrated into, into the synth. Uh, we did notice though, that there seems to be something in the, cause you used, um, I'm not sure about the graphics engine, but you, you're, these aren't like images. These are like calculated, right? Yeah. 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 Um, so I was looking up uh, a lot of different ways to mess with the GUI. Cause like I said, I'm kind of new to that. And um, I, I was thinking about putting an image and manipulating the image, but the more I researched into it, um, uh, a lot of people on the, the juice forum uh, said that they don't really use images. They, they use vectors and they manipulate, you know, based off of math and whatnot. And um, so my question or my, my problem was I, I wanted to get something that looked a little bit better than uh, what the standard graphics were for, for juice, but they, they give you by standard. Yeah. And, um, but I didn't want to get too heavily into it because I wanted to focus also on the processing and whatnot and other components. And uh, uh, I guess um, it was really cool because I, I learned about this class. It's called Look and Fill. And, and this Look and Fill class is really straightforward and it lets you mess with you know all the different uh, graphics and whatnot. I kept it pretty straightforward, um, made everything green because I thought that looked a little bit more... I guess futuristic. It's, it's organic. <laughs> yeah. It's lifelike. <laughs> lifelike. Um, I took off the little knob. Uh, usually on on the juice knobs, you have like a I don't even know what a thumbnail that you pull up and down. I, I oh yeah, yeah yeah yeah. So I took off the thumbnail and then I put a slight glow to to it and um, it's not really noticeable, but it gives it a little bit more shine. Yes. There's this noise oscillator. <laughs> YouTube's gonna have fun with that, trying to compress that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, do you wanna explain a little bit about how you made it? Um, yeah, you take a value between negative one and one, and you ran randomize it, and you mix it into your sound, and then you, you have noise. And uh, that's uh, one of the basic uh, places I started with. It, it was one of the few things I could kind of think out on my own. <laughs> 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 There's actually a bunch of different kinds of noise. It'd be interesting to use uh, different distributions uh, for like your random number picker. Yeah, get, was, like the different kinds. I was reading about that. The different like noise colors. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then, um, do you do you want to explain really quick your frequency shift? Yeah. So, um, the the shift only does the first oscillator. I was keeping it relatively simple and. Um, it, it shifts it up by just adding um, to to the frequency um, by some kind of hertz amount. I, I started out with that because uh, um, we we thought it would be something simple to do. Yeah, you know? that was one that we th I thought it was going to be really easy to just change it, the frequency, but it wound up being this way harder than we, uh, than I realized by a lot. What what we originally planned to do. And, and so we made this uh, additional, um, it, it, it just adds to the Hertz and it made it a lot simpler than what we were originally planning. Yeah, so this was a control that we had a big plan for and we realized there's no way we're gonna be able to do, to do what we need to do to make that before, and yeah. And that reminds me, um, for for the synthesizers, um, we haven't talked about the voices and whatnot. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. Go ahead. Um, so so inside the Juice framework, um, it, it has these classes that make it really simple and straightforward to add um, voices or or allow you to play multiple keys at one time. And uh, my synth, I think I set it for five voices just because uh, I just chose something arbitrary. I thought that was good. It was a lot more straight than I thought it was going to be to yeah. like, do. I think this project's taught me a lot about um, project management to a degree. Um, I, I've taken quite a few classes in, in high school, I mean, in college about project management. And I think um, this project really, you know, uh, highlighted them because I, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to make. I wasn't sure where I wanted to go. Yeah. And, and these are important concepts. And, and we bounced around a few ideas for a while. And, um, you know, we, we used uh, what um, people would call in 
programming or, or management, uh, the agile method, kind of bouncing ideas and, and making a list of ideas and then just implementing them one by one. And I, I think I learned a lot about, um, you know, how to, you know, go about exploring these ideas and how to, you know, make them into what I want, you know. If so. you were to go further with this project, what things would you look at adding or changing? I definitely wanted to go more into like filters because I know filters like go, you know, can make tons of things like flangers and and um, compression and whatnot. And so I definitely want to explore more with filters because I know that adds a lot of capability. Um, something that I would change about this, um, this is more on a program side rather than like on the outside. Uh, when I made this, um, I made a lot of uh, what, what they call components, which is GUI objects. I would organize it a little bit differently because uh, right now my code is pretty simple to like, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. a change and whatnot, but it could be more simple, you know, it could be more. And so from a programming side, um, I, I, I would change how modular my code is with the GUI. Uh, so you can download it. If you, I encourage you make something with this thing and send it to us. We would love to see what you've made. Well, thanks for tuning in. Uh, again, if you make something with it, let us know. There'll be a link in the description. Subscribe and have a blessed day. All right, this is how loud I'm gonna talk and I'll be facing this way, looking at the blue camera and and you talk. Oh, this is how loud I'll talk. What, what was the most difficult <laughs> part of this project for you, Joe? Nothing about music. <laughs> <laughs>